Hey, it's Rowan here, and um, it's International Peanut Day today. So I wanted to film a tombstone talk. September 13th, 2017 is when I'm filming this, and uh, I just did an interview with a pastor, a Christian pastor. So it was pretty interesting. Uh, it was a good guy, good guy. Um, but I'm seeing a pattern develop. When I interview Christians, I'm seeing that they are so confident, so, so confident that there's an afterlife, that there's a God. It doesn't seem that they have a humility that I would want them to have, you know? Just the humility to admit, you know, you don't know for sure there's a God. You don't know for sure that there's an afterlife um, that's really all I want from these religious people, just to admit. But they're so confident. They always say they know for sure. They know for sure that they're going to heaven. They know for sure that they're saved. It kind of just seems very arrogant. It doesn't, it's not a humble attitude. The humble attitude, the good philosopher says, I don't know. You know, I don't know. The, if there's an afterlife or if there's a God, you know, for for instance, I'm an atheist, but I have at least the humility to admit that I don't know if there is or if there isn't a God. It's like, I don't believe there's a God, but I have the humility at least to admit that I don't know for sure. So why can't the religious people have the humility to admit they don't know for sure that there is a God. Right? I have the humility to admit that I don't know for sure that there isn't a God, but they're, they're the cocky ones, they're the arrogant ones, acting like they know everything. And, uh, anyways, my, my message has not changed. Okay, I wanted this, this tombstone talk to be about death. You know, that's the main topic here living forever, so we gotta avoid death simply because nobody freaking knows what happens after you die. It's very simple, people. It's very simple. And because we don't know what happens after you die, it makes most logical sense to live forever physically on this planet. Regardless of whether you happen to believe in a god, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Christian, whatever your religion, just live forever physically because this life is the only life that we know exists. It's very simple. It's very simple. And uh, how do we live forever physically, you ask? Uh, it's a hard thing. We're gonna have to come up with uh, some kind of cure for aging. Have I figured it out? No. But I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna try to do whatever I can to cure aging. I'm gonna do whatever I can to support the science and the researchers out there who are working to cure aging and uh, just think everybody should be involved in this because aging is going to kill us all, isn't it? Isn't that what's going to destroy our life? That We're going to get old, we're going to freaking die, unless we do something different, we're going to end up like all of these people. And uh, look at these people. You know, people have different theories as to, oh, maybe they're, maybe they've disembodied spirits floating around in the ether, in heaven or something. That's a hypothesis, people. It's a hypothesis. Freak, we're in a lot of trouble. That's my message. So I would say that the, the intelligent attitude to have in regards to death is one of fear. And this is what I see most people lacking, is the fear. You know, fearing death. But not just emotionally fearing death, that's not good enough. What does that do? What does that do for you to emotionally fear death unless you're acting as if you're fearing death? What I'm saying is use your fear to uh, direct your actions in a way that is going to avoid help you avoid death, you know, like avoid dangers, avoid risks, you know, don't drink, 
don't freaking eat junk food. And, uh, you know, when I was a Christian, I remember reading a Bible verse that I thought was pretty cool. It talked about treating your body like a temple. I don't know the exact Bible verse, but it was like, treat your body like a temple. And that has always made a lot of sense to me. You know, now that I'm, now that I don't believe in God, I can still apply that to my life. That my body is a freaking temple and you, you treat your body with respect. You eat healthy. You, you, like this is the vehicle, man. You treat your body like special. You know, you don't, don't risk your health. People are, are, uh, are doing all kinds of dangerous things, okay? They're, they're going out there and literally giving themselves STDs because they're being promiscuous, okay? They're having sex with a bunch of people. They're contaminating their bodies with STDs. Um, you know, it's like, Hello, these people are idiots. They're they're really they're really stupid because they're not uh, they're not taking their health seriously. You know. Listen to those birds chirping away, huh? Um, so the fear of death, the fear of death, the fear of death should lead to intelligent and wise choices that you're making. That's the point. Um, and why don't people fear death? What is, what are the main reasons? Okay. People, people, when they're children, that's when they typically have the most fear of death, when they first learn about it, right? You tell a child about death, you bring them to a cemetery. I'd love to see the reaction. I should do this in the future. Bring children to a cemetery and teach them about death for the first time and say, look at all these people. They had lives before, you know, and now they're freaking dead. Look at them, they're underground. They're rotting, you know, Show, bring them to a morgue. I'd love to bring a bunch of children into a morgue and see their reaction. See, see, see children looking at dead bodies and like, what are these freak? These children would freak out. And uh, my point is, as adults, we should be childlike. You know, what's a fear? Fear of death is a freaking childlike thing, okay? Children are terrified of death. There's a video on YouTube, I'll put it in the description, okay? Where this girl, Sadie Miller, she is learning about death. You know, she's learning about aging for the first time and she's having an existential crisis. She's like, I don't wanna die when I'm 100. She's freaking out. And, and we should be freaking out. As adults, we should be terrified of death. You know, what I'm saying is obvious. And cause, so why do, why do adults lose their fear of death? It's because, well, religion, religion comes to the rescue and says, well, there's a heaven, okay, there's a God, you don't need to worry. It's wishful thinking, wishful thinking. Yeah, I wish there was a God. Of course, I wish there was a heaven. But hello, we don't know these things, these are, theories, they're a hypothesis, and, uh, you know, <sighs> look at those birds, wow, look at this freaking cemetery, this is cool, okay, I mean, it's not cool, I mean, these are losers, they're dead, they freaking lost the game, okay, if life is a game, these people lost. For all we know, I mean, look at them. Are we gonna assume that they're alive still? Look, 
So all I'm saying is be childlike with your, in regards to death, okay? Fear death like a child. That's the humble attitude. That's all I'm saying. And, and here's the other thing. Um, you know, it goes both ways. Like I said I was humble in regards to like that I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sitting here like saying that I know for sure all these people have ceased to exist. I'm not sitting here, I'm not saying that I know for sure there is no God. And because I don't know for sure if there is no God, if there is a God or if there isn't, I don't know. Nobody can know these things. I would put God in the realm of knowledge that is unknowable. This is intelligent. Okay, this is what agnosticism is about. I'm an agnostic atheist. And because I'm an agnostic atheist, I have the humility to admit maybe there is a God. And so what do I do with that? What do I do? I say, okay, so maybe there's a God. And I'll, I'll try to be a good person just in case. Better safe than sorry. I'll live a life as though maybe I'm gonna be judged by some hypothetical God. And what else can I do? If I'm trying to be prepared for anything, if I'm trying to be prepared, if I'm trying to be smart, all right, humble, I would say, yeah, maybe there's a God, maybe I'm gonna be judged. You know, maybe the God gets to decide who gets to live forever. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so that's all I can do is be a good person. All I can do is, you know, be a perfect person, try to be practically perfect, be moral, be ethical. Of course, don't, you know, hurt anyone. Be, be as good as you possibly can be. And these Christians will say, oh, oh, they know the rules of God. They know the exact standard. They know you have to obey this list of rules that Christians will say, oh yeah, you know, you have to believe in Jesus and all this stuff. But here, here's the thing. If there is a God, nobody could know the standard of like what you need to do to get into heaven or what you need to do to earn favor with this God. It's all a hypothesis. That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's why I say the hypothetical God because no one would know the rules. If there's a God, you wouldn't know the rule book. Christians always are saying, oh, it's their Bible. And then the, the Muslims are saying it's the Quran, and you have every other religion saying it's their book. They know the rules of God. No, they don't. They don't freaking know the rules. If there's a God, it's hypothetical. The rules of God are hypothetical. So because you can't know if there's a God, you can't know the rules of this hypothetical God, what can you do? You have to, you guess. You make your best guess, an educated guess as to what the rules might be. And you just, but you wouldn't know the standard. You wouldn't know how like, um, you wouldn't know how good you need to be. Like let's say hypothetically the God, right? And hypothetically the God is going to judge us by our actions. You wouldn't know how how uh, good your actions need to be. You wouldn't know. For all we know, the hypothetical God would require you to be perfect or near perfect. So all we can do is be practically perfect, like be as perfect as we can be, be like Mary Poppins, you know, practically perfect in every way. And that way our odds, we have the best odds of maybe being rewarded by the hypothetical God if it turns out that I'm wrong and there is a God. Be a practically perfect person. There you go. It's settled. Just be practically perfect and that's, that's your goal. And uh, fear death. So you fear death, but you don't, you don't stop at the fear of death. You fear death and you fear the hypothetical God. Most Christians, they, they, only, they only fear the hypothetical, they only fear their God, but they don't fear death. And a lot of people fear death, but they don't fear the hypothetical God. How about both? 
How about you fear death and you fear the hypothetical God? That way you put your eggs in both baskets. You try to get eternal life from every angle. If it turns out there is a God and judging us, then you have your best odds by passing the whatever test there might be if this life is a test. But if it turns out there isn't a God, then you don't die. You don't die and find out. You don't need, you don't, you don't, you never, should never die because this life is the only life we know exists. So I think I've, um, I think I've got myself worked up. I think I've, I've, that's really the message. That, that's what I've been saying this whole time, people. The Eternal Life Fan Club, that was my message. It is my message. I can't see my message changing anytime soon. So my message is fear. Fear. Fear death, fear the hypothetical God, and work for your eternal life. Strive for your eternal life. We'll end it with my favorite Bible verse. Philippians 2.12, which says, continue to work for your salvation with fear and trembling. But I'm an atheist. I'm not, I'm not saying there's a salvation, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying that there's a God that could save us. There might be, but I'm saying we need to work for our eternal life with fear and trembling, however that looks. Continue to work for your eternal life with fear and trembling. It's International Peanut Day, so I did want to talk a little bit about the peanut. Now, a lot of people don't know, but the peanut, the peanut plant, it, it grows underground. Okay, so the peanuts dig themselves underground, and that's where they grow. Underground, like these people, 